Hello guys, really good to see you back here again on the channel. And on this week's episode, we're going to be having a look at more of your images. Yeah, I know it's been a week off because I've been away doing some stuff, but we're back on it. You know why? Because I've got so many of them to get through. And I really wanna show all of them at various stages as we progress through. So without any further ado, let's get and have a look at some of your awesome images. First up, we have a couple of images from Peter Colvite in the United States. And uh, Peter took these beautiful images back in 2020. Back in July, he says he backpacked seven miles up to 12,000 feet with the intent to photograph his first Milky Way panorama with his Nikon Z7 and a 20 millimeter F1.8 lens with the adapter. Uh, the location is Lost Creek Wilderness, about 50 miles west from Denver and Colorado Springs. The weather was supposed to be clear and I knew light pollution would be a challenge, but as the sun set, a massive heat lightning storm rolled in over Denver, and you can see the results here. Wow, what a great capture. You know, sometimes we just have to be in the right place at the right time to capture awesome images like this. And you know, the light pollution from the city is actually underlighting that cloud, and sometimes they can actually work in our favor, and I don't mind it in this case. This second image is a nine, shot stitched panorama uh, at, using that same 20 millimeter f1.8 lens iso 5000 10 second shutter speed and that's the lights of denver on the left and colorado springs in the center so these are excellent peter thanks so much for sending them in so next up we stay in the united states and we're seeing a couple of images here from don huff and don says hi richard thanks for doing this i enjoy your photos and learn much from your youtube channel Thanks a lot, Don. So this first image of the grader was taken in the Flint Hills of Kansas, USA. 10 images for the Milky Way taken at ISO 6400 at f2.8, 15 second shutter speed. And the foreground is eight photos taken at ISO 500 at f5 at also 15 second shutter speed. Light painted with a handheld light with the orange filter on the front. And uh, yep, that's fantastic. I actually really like the way this image is shot. He's got a good angle on the machine so that the Milky Way is off to the side. So it draws your eye through past the machine straight into the center of the Milky Way galactic core. And let's have a look at the second image. And here it is. And by the way, these were shot with a Nikon D750 with the Rokinon 14 millimeter f 2.8 lens. This one is also shot at ISO 6400 at f 2.8 at 15 second shutter speed. It's eight sky for the sky combined in sequator. So he stacked that sky in sequator. Foreground, five photos at f 5.6, eight second shutter speed, ISO 5000. He used Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop to post process the images. And these oil wells are scattered across the, this part of the Flint Hills in Kansas, USA. Well, Don, this is a beautiful image. This is right up my alley. I love images like this because they can stand alone all by themselves. Love the way that you've light painted it. Something that is pretty unusual and I, I would suggest unique to the area. So fantastic, Don. Really appreciate you sending those through. For our next image, we head to Portugal. And this is by Mario Pereira. And Mario is saying here that this image is 16 photos at 10 second shutter speed stacked. At f2.8, ISO 3200, he's shooting with the Nikon Z7 Mark II and the Nikkor Z 20mm f1.8 S lens. Now he stacked these on Starry Landscape Stacker for noise reduction, then edited on Photoshop with star reduction using Star Exterminator. Okay, well I've showed a few videos about that and it's a pretty good program. And he asked me, what do I think? Well, I think it looks pretty good. I, I love the composition, I love the stone structure. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, hang on, he tells me what it is. I should be reading this. This is a foreground tree and a very old megalithic monument. And there's many that still exist in Portugal from the Iberian Peninsula. Okay, and he's got his camera nice and low down. I like the way that the gr grass in the foreground and the tree overhangs the, the, the monument. And he's got the Milky Way there off to the right hand side. So uh, yep, yeah, it's, a, it's a great image, Mario. And um, he, he also mentions here he hasn't had many opportunities to get out because his wife is struggling with some uh, medical treatments. And I, I'm really sorry to hear that, Mario. I hope she gets well soon. 
Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, sir, for sending this image through. And now we have some images from Shane Smith in Australia. And the Shane says, G'day, Richard. <laughs> He's an Aussie, all right. Hope this finds you well. I've been a subscriber for a while to the channel and I want to thank you so much for the time and effort you put into each and every one of your vlogs. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate. Now, these images are taken at Govett's Leap in Blackheath, which is in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales here in Australia. It was a cold and very windy early morning standing near the edge of a cliff at the lookout. These were taken with the Fujifilm X-T3 and the Rokinon 12mm f2 lens. All of these images are two photos blended, one for the Milky Way and the other one for my attempt at light painting a structure. This first photo uh, was taken at ISO 1600, 30 second shutter speed at f2, and the arch at ISO 500, 13 second shutter speeds at f5. So he's done a pretty good job, I don't mind this. It's only two images, remember, one for the background and one for the foreground. And we've got some more here. Uh, these images were shot with the same camera lens, but a little bit different setting. So the Milky Way is shot at ISO 1600, 20 second shutter speeds at f2. The Stone Pinnacle is at ISO 500, 10 second shutter speed at f5. So you can see these images there. He's taken a few different angles to try and make sure he can get as much of that sky in as possible. Uh, he says here, they were all worked on in Lightroom and blended in Photoshop. I'm very happy with my first attempt at capturing the Milky Way, and I want to thank you, Richard. Well, for a first attempt, I think these are absolutely sensational, Shane. So you should be really proud of yourself, my friend. I look forward to seeing what else you can come up with. Our next image is from Brad DeLay from the United States, and this gorgeous image of the lighthouse. Uh, now, this is Bodie Lighthouse on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, USA. Images were taken at 3.20 a.m. on the 26th of April, 2022. So that's a nice early morning there for you, Brad. But anyway, it's, it's a lovely image. He says here, no one was there. It just sounds of owls and coyotes in the distance. Perfect, he says. Behind me, there's a separate public bathroom house with bright lights on the entrance. He said he had scouted the location during the daytime, so he brought two black bags that he used to cover the lights. Gee, I could have done that same trick a few times too, but I didn't. Anyway, else his shadow would have been projected onto the lower part of the lighthouse, and that could be a, a problem, especially being a, a white colour. So as he says here, it pays to do your homework beforehand. I totally agree with that. This is shot with a Nikon D780 and a Nikon 20mm f1.8 lens. A lot of people are using these Nikon 20mm lenses. 10 sky images shot at 13 seconds at f2.2, ISO 6400. A few adjustments in Lightroom, then stacked on a Mac using Starry Landscape Stacker. Now he's dual processed these in Photoshop. From the stacked image, I opened as a smart object in Photoshop, then copied the layer, new smart object, copy layer, then copied the layer again. I edited the lighthouse and the keeper's house. I blended these two images and then processed in Photoshop. So he's doing a bit of work there. I like to hear what people are doing with their processing. These are quite difficult images to do because of that bright light, that extremely high light at the top there of the lighthouse. But this is wonderful because there's still an enormous amount of detail in that Milky Way galactic core. So Brad, you've done an excellent job of this. Uh, he says here, I followed all your videos. I learned a lot about taking images and post-processing. Uh, and I started doing some light painting also, but he's not quite there yet, but he will share them later. Well, Brad, if you get those images anywhere near as good as this, I'll be very keen to see them. Now you're in for an absolute treat here because we're going to India and we've had these beautiful images sent through from Lakenda Pilania. Hope I got that right. Uh, so he says here, he's an Indian based photographer living in J uh, Jaipur, Rajasthan. Been following me on Facebook since 2015 and started posting videos on YouTube. I was one of your first subscribers. Well, I really appreciate that. And these images are absolutely gorgeous. Now, we'll just go through them, but they're shot on a Nikon Z6 Mark II. Uh, a couple of them here on a Samyang 12 millimeter fisheye lens, f2.8. So he's shooting uh, 10 by 25 second sky shots at ISO 4000 at f2.8 and one 180 second foreground shot at ISO 1000 at f3.2. 
And you can see some of these images, they are stunning, absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what to say, they're just so good. And you can see this one we're looking at now is shot with a 50 mil lens. So I'm just going down, this looks like, yep, there's 20 by six second shutter speeds at, at 50 millimeter focal length at f1.8, ISO 2500. Now he hasn't mentioned what he did for the foreground. I'm not too sure if that's a long exposure or not, but boy, that's a stunning image. Absolutely beautiful. And you can see some of the other ones here. Th these are just gorgeous. So isn't it amazing? It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can get these absolutely stunning, stunning images. Now there's uh, one here shot with the 24 to 70 uh, f2.8 Nikon lens, uh, 20 by 15 second shutter speeds for the sky exposure. So these are stacked ISO 4000 f2.8 at 26 millimeters. He shot these one 180 second foreground shot at ISO 2000 at f2.8. And a shot taken from Penza Le Pass, situated at 14,400 feet in zero degrees. Well, there you go. He's also shot some of these at 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. These are just stunning, absolutely stunning images. And look at that. The top of a mountain, freezing conditions, having the time of your life. That's exactly what this is all about. And so we're back to Australia, and this is Michael Van Berkel. And uh, Michael has taken the trip down to the Great Ocean Road. This first image of the Aurora was taken at Aries Inlet Lighthouse, and the lights to the right are from the city of Lawn. So this image was taken about 1 a.m. the same night in May 2021, when I was at Lake Pedder in Tasmania. And do I remember that night? It was such a beautiful experience. So uh, as uh, Michael is saying, it was the first time taking a photo of an aurora. And when he got home about 3 a.m., he was still on a high. I certainly know that feeling. So the second image, this one is taken at the Bay of Islands near Peterborough. And that's a place I've visited myself. Gorgeous location for shooting the Milky Way because as you can see from this image, it sets down lovely just over the top of the water. And you've got these these stacks, these beautiful islands, as they call them, in, in the water in the foreground. So it's 10 images stacked in Sequoia with the planet Venus front and center. Uh, it's shot with a, again with a Nikon Z6 and a 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. Shot at f2.2, ISO 6415 seconds. That's a beautiful image, nice and clean and sharp. Really, really well done, Michael. And for this next image, now this image, believe it or not, is taken at night, about 11 p.m. with a 40% moon from memory. It's at the 12 Apostles at Port Campbell. This is, these are all on the Great Ocean Road. For those who don't live around Australia would, may not have heard of them, but it's a beautiful location. He exposed it as much for the cliff face as anything, trying to get the color and detail from it as it looks in the daytime. And he's done a pretty good job of that. So he used again the Nikon Z6 with a 20 mil f1.8 lens, he shot this at f2.2 at ISO 3200 and 10 second shutter speed. So this looks like just a single exposure. So what a fantastic image. It looks like daytime. Isn't it amazing what detail you can get out of a camera at night with just a touch of moonlight. So fantastic, Michael. Thanks so much for sending these ones through. And now we head over to Italy and these images are from Samuel Bertoli. He says, hello, it's my great honor to share some of my photography I recently took in Tuscany in Italy. He, unfortunately, I don't get out that often, but when I get a chance to see my parents, my home region always gives me great emotions and beauty. Man, it sure does. These are beautiful images. So some weeks ago, I could spare some time. He popped down to Tuscany. So these were taken in Val d'Orsia, Tuscany, Italy. Shooting with a Canon EOS R6 and a Sigma Art 28 millimeter f1.4 lens. Now that is an awesome lens. I know a few people who have that, uh, but not that many people use it in comparison to the other Sigma lenses. So this is awesome. Now, uh, these were taken, these are stacked. So he shot 10 sky shots at eight second shutter speeds at ISO 1600 at f1.8 at 28 millimeters. The ground and foreground is just a single image raw enhanced using DxO Pure Raw 2. So what gorgeous images, have a look at them. They are just stunning. I love every single one of these. Now he's had to deal with a bit of light pollution there, but in the end, they are so good. 
And you know, it's a conviction of mine that sometimes a little bit of light pollution can actually enhance an image as long as it doesn't just blow out the sky. And as you can see in these images uh, from Samuel, the sky is not totally blown out. So the light pollution on the horizon sometimes gives us just that backlight view of the foreground, in this case, trees and buildings, and it just looks really, really good. So thanks so much, Samuel, love them. Now, I am very pleased to show you these images all the way from Russia, and this is Kirill Kuznetsov. These are all one frame, single shots, uh, with a Nikon Z6 Mark II and a Nikon Z14-24 f2.8 lens, which is a fantastic lens. He's been shooting, watching my channel for a while, over a year, interested in this theme of night landscape. And, but for a long time, he did not have high quality equipment. So he recently managed to get that equipment that I mentioned. And this is what he has come up with. Now just have a look at these images. So these are taken in the Northern Hemisphere in Russia in the Urals. We can hardly see the bright part of the Milky Way, but still in August and September, you can catch good colors. And the photo series was taken at Belogosi Convent in Perm Cray, Russia. Have a look at that. Man, there must have been a meteor shower. There's just, there's just beautiful images everywhere here. Look at them. And the architecture. Gee, these are really, really good, Kirill. Thank you so much for sending these through. I really appreciate it. And so our last contribution to this episode is from Jacob Sorensen from Australia. Jacob's got a number of images here which I'd like to share with you. And he's shooting these images with a Canon EOS R with a Sigma 14mm f1.8 lens. And he used the torch for the foreground, just waved it over the hut once or twice briefly during the exposure. It's an abandoned hut about an hour west of Brisbane in Queensland here in Australia. This image of the sunflowers, what a fantastic shot this is. It's located at Mount Walker in Queensland, a single 25 second exposure at ISO 1600 at f2.8. It's a Canon EOS R with the EFS 24mm lens, a bit of light painting with the torch. It was a cloudy night and he couldn't see the Milky Way, so he decided to try something else to make the most out of the drive. And this shot here, which is a tree silhouettes, this is located in Rath Downey in Queensland. This is a lot more elaborate. This is uh, Attract Sky Shots, five 90 second images at ISO 800. And then he's taken five 90 second tracked monochrome images, also at ISO 800, f2.8. The foreground is one 20 second exposure at f2.8 and ISO 1600. Also taken with that Canon EOS R and the 24 millimeter lens. The monochrome frames were a bit of an accident, but thought I'd use them anyway and very impressed with the results. So that's something that's a little bit unusual. So here we have dead trees in a misty lake. This is Lake uh, Wyaralong in Queensland. So he's taken eight 90 second tracked images for the sky at ISO 800 f2.8 panorama stitched in Lightroom. Foreground is three 10 second exposures at ISO 800 f3.5 lit by moonlight. So these are stitched in Lightroom as well. So perhaps there's two panos that he's stitched there, but anyway. And his uh, foreground and sky were then blended together in Photoshop using TK Actions. These are absolutely gorgeous, these images. There's a lot of references to the, how he shot these, but I, it's way too much to read out. So I'll just show you the images. They are just stunning. This pano here with the setting Milky Way Galactic Core, what a fantastic image. And here we have a light painted uh, hut or shack or a house or something, cabin. Lovely work. These are just stunning, Jacob. And have a look at this. Looks like a campsite. And why not? There's nothing like a good selfie, I reckon. And look at that sky above and you've got the, the canopy of the trees. That's well framed. I really like that shot. Yeah, it looks like the, the few friends here, the lads, are having a bit of a get together under the stars. That's not an easy shot to take because those guys got to hold still for whatever duration of that shutter. So well done, boys. Uh, another dead tree. Love dead trees. Fantastic. And here's another pano over the top of another mountain and some water. These are excellent. These are absolutely stunning. Jacob, love your work, mate. So there you go, aren't they just fantastic? And I'm so pleased that you guys are going to the effort of actually sending them through to me. So 
I'll take some more. I don't know how long this is going to go for, but keep sending them in. You can see where to send them down below here. And in the meantime, look, I've got plenty of things I'm working on and I'm looking forward to bringing you some more awesome nightscape photography adventures all over the place. So until the next video, you have a fantastic week and I'll see you later.